Yeah, here we go. That'll put him in a good mood. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you see Ren today or tomorrow, if you've already had him, congratulate him on being Teacher of the Year. He loves that stuff, and he works incredibly hard, as you know. Okay. If you are coming on the trip, we are doing a meeting tomorrow after school at 325 and 1 at 4 o'clock. So if you are interested, please come. Here we go. We left off at Protestant Reformation with your boy, Martin Luther. Okay. Martin Luther, who can? Let's do a couple whiteboard things. No, no, we're not. All right. 1517 is when the uh, Protestant Reformation began, yes? Yeah. Okay, so... He hates indulgences, yes? Who can tell me what an indulgence is? Uh, Scott? It's like a payment to forgive your sins. Yeah, like, hey, I killed a guy last night, Father, forgive me for I have sin. And he's like, dude, you're, that's a mortal sin. You're going to hell. And you're like, can I just pay you? And the guy's like, ah, oh, yeah. Give me 500 bucks and you can go to heaven. That's indulgence. Simony, which is where we left off, yes? Okay, what is simony? Is he? When you purchase a certain position. Yeah, so if you wanted to be the cardinal of Paris, so the larger uh, your cardinalship is, like the territory you have, the more prominence you are. That makes sense, yes? So there is a cardinal of the United States. Did you know that? If you're a Catholic, okay? They're based in Washington, D.C., because that is the capital. capital. Look at you figuring it out. Anyway, I'm going to fall out of this chair today. <laughs> they are going to be the representative who actually flies to Rome and votes in all the papal hearings. Does that make sense? So today, there are cardinals that fly from every Chris every country, or the powerful ones, let's be honest with ourselves, and um, they represent their constituency, or them, but there's lower cardinals here as well. Simony is the purchasing of that power. And then finally, do we have the third major thing? So he's mad about indulgences, he's mad about simony, and he's also mad about the uh, papal power is his other major thing, papal power. He believes the Pope has turned the church away from the Bible and closer to them. So he believes that the Pope has perverted Christianity away from the Bible to the Pope. So if you're a Catholic, you believe God speaks to the Pope, and then the Pope speaks to you, or us, okay? So, apparently, when you become Pope, there's a deafening silence that overcomes you, and God speaks to you. Damn, kind of wild, right? Anyway. With that being said, he believes that the Pope has kind of perverted it and has pulled too much influence, that they're getting away from God's words. All right, perfect. You also need to know that they are going to use, uh, the Protestants are going to refuse to use Latin and are going to use local languages like German, French, English. What do we call those? Um, yeah, there's another term that I can't come up with it, which is why I'm asking. <laughs> uh, it's like the local Roman. language. There's another term. Huh? Roman. No, they all fall into that. Indo-European? No. No, it's, it's not your fault, it's my fault. I can't come up with a word this morning either. And someone was shocked that this guy is white. Why would they think he was black, Parker? Because of Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi, this is Martin Luther. He's white because he's German. German people are white. Look at you, okay? With that being said, Martin Luther King Jr. is a black Southern Baptist preacher. If he's Baptist, he falls under Protestant. So Martin Luther King Jr. is a third generation Martin Luther. They, all of his grandfathers and fathers were pro, uh, Baptist ministers who follow the words of Martin Luther, which is why he's named Martin Luther King Jr. That's the connection. Someone literally, oh, he's not black. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking 1960s America, 1517. Different. So, 
This is one of the structures that built indulgences. Ladies and gentlemen, are they making a little bit of money or a lot of money? A lot of money. They also built the Notre Dame Cathedral. Yes, that's built on indulgences. It's now currently being rebuilt because it caught on fire a couple years ago for $6.5 billion. Yeah, that's how much because they can't use nails because the original architecture. Ryan will get to it when you get there. <coughs> indulgences, big money, yes? Okay, so here we go. You need to know that Martin Luther is a German monk. So who, what country is the first one to turn? Germany. Germany, okay, which was controlled by the Holy Roman Emperor, Empire at that point. So Martin Luther is going to turn Germany Protestant very quickly because the lords and nobles of Germany are going to support him. Why do you think they're gonna support this guy? Think about it logically, it makes sense. Who are they tired of paying? The church, absolutely. So if I don't have to pay the church, I get to keep more money. And let's be honest, the Catholic Church is rotten from the inside out, yeah? Okay, we still have a lot of problems in the Catholic Church, can we agree? So, yeah, like a lot of problems. More scandals are coming out every day. So does the Episcopal Church, by the way. Here we go. Anyway, so Germany is going to be the first ones to convert, and it is going to be very popular and supported by the lords and nobles. <coughs> <laughs> okay? That's a test question. Okay, so Calvinism is your first major break off. Okay, so we have Lutheranism, which is going to be known as Protestantism. The first guy to really break off of it is John Calvin, who starts Calvinism. Okay, now his big thing is about getting back to the core of Christianity and hard work. His sect of Protestantism is going to bring us Presbyterians, Huguenots. <gasps> are those all Puritans? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Okay, so England's Puritans. And how, <coughs> why do we care about them? Oh my gosh, people, it's coming up on that season where we pretend these people were good people, Virginia. They're Puritans. They call themselves purified because they've rejected the Catholic Church and all that stuff. But yeah, these are the uh, Puritans who are going to come across on the Mayflower. Yes, they're going to come to Plymouth, Massachusetts, and start because they get kicked out of England because they're kind of on the extremes. Okay, so. Calvinism is going to break off. You do need to know Huguenots come from France. Puritans are going to come from England. These terms are going to come back to us, by the way. The Huguenots are going to be a huge component because France is going to struggle with being Catholic or Protestant. Uh, and so Huguenots is very popular terminology. You're just going to have to know. So when you hear the term Puritan, you automatically know they are? They're English and they're Protestant. Okay. All right. So... Anglican, here are we, is anyone an Anglican? Okay, it's kind of popular, it's very close to Episcopalian. Okay, Anglican is going to be in England, and it is started by Henry VIII, I am, I am. And why does Henry VIII start this church? Why, Hayden? Because he like, wants to divorce his wife, but the church won't let him. Yes, he is not motivated by love of God or the wrongs of the Catholic Church. He is motivated because the Catholic Church won't give him what he wants. So he says, screw you, Catholic Church. I'm going to use this Protestant thing to my advantage. Henry. So it was like the entirety of it is his wanting to do stuff. It's <coughs> like a little, it just says like, I get a divorce. And that's it, so. Pretty much. It's pretty much Catholic, except now the leader of the religion happens to be conveniently the monarch. It's literally, it's Anglican and Episcopalian are pretty much diet Catholic. So wait, do modern Anglicans believe like the Queen is the... Yeah. yeah. The Queen of England is the head of the Anglican Church. Yeah, so like when she leads Mass and service and all that, like she doesn't like lead, like she, but she opens the service at the beginning of like opening of court and all that stuff, yeah. Okay, so you do need to know he is going to turn England from a Catholic nation to a Protestant nation. 
and that is going to cause a huge fracture in England. It's going to cause a lot of problems. It goes from Catholic nation to a Protestant nation. <coughs> okay, and this is his wives. Okay, now it is his daughter, Elizabeth I, ladies and gentlemen. It is his daughter who really actually embraces Protestantism. <coughs> okay, she actually genuinely cares about it. It's very much like Sundita. To Mansa Musa, Sundita embraces Islam because he wants it to attract traders, yes? But is Mansa Musa who is devout? Henry VIII wants a divorce, okay, because he doesn't have a male heir. So he changes the church, and then all of a sudden we have Elizabeth I, who is super devout. She's going around killing Catholics, <laughs> okay? And she is going to um, really spearhead this whole thing. If any of you watch the terrible TV show of Brain on CW, it's on Netflix, okay? Yeah, is that you? Okay, mm -hmm. this is the time period you're dealing with because yeah. she's a Protestant and all that. Uh, she's a Catholic and all that stuff. So, um, you do need to know that Elizabeth I, okay, boss chick, by the way, uh, she is going to defeat the Spanish Armada in 1588. We're going to come back to this fact. But uh, she defeats the Spanish Armada in 1588. You do need to know that date. And that is the starting of the British Empire, 1588. Okay, so this is going to be the start of the rise of the British Empire is 1588. So they will be the most powerful country in the world until? Portuguese. Well, they are white. They're British. Oh, well. <coughs> until uh, 1918, which is when the United States rise as the most powerful nation. All right, here we go. So the Catholic Reformation. So we have the Protestant Reformation, now we have the Catholic Reformation. It is done to stop losing power. Because the Protestant Reformation is going to pull power from the Catholic Church. It literally fractures the Catholic Church. They are trying to stop the bleeding. <laughs> so they have to fix three things. Okay, it's also known as the Counter-Reformation. We have the Inquisition, okay, which is going around killing any Protestant they find. And a majority of them are women. Isn't that fun? Well, they use it as an opportunity to like punish women. You know, I mean, come on. For doing that. For being outspoken. Because uh, Protestantism is pretty radical. As in, they thought women should be able to speak on the words of God and stuff like that, and God made both of us, so who are you? Have you ever been into a Protestant? Are you a Protestant? What are you? you know, you've never been in a church? Yeah. You've never been? No. Okay. <coughs> well, I'll tell you, as a good old Catholic, and I'm not a good Catholic, it blew my mind. My first church service with McCray and his family on Christmas Eve one year, when we just started dating, there was a female doing like church stuff. Yeah, she was up there. She was, it was a female preacher. I've actually never seen that. Yeah, church. it was wild. <laughs> I've never seen a female up there. I was just like, yeah, I don't want it, but it was cool. Jesuits, like the Jesuits we have in Tampa. Yes, they're named after the Jesuits. They do like charitable work so the Catholic Church doesn't look bad anymore. It's like, oh, look at the things we're doing. And then you have the Council of Trent who is going to say, no more indulgences. No more simony. Except you can still do simony if you don't get the right. And there you go. Now, this is considered very successful, by the way, because a lot of Europe is still. Yeah. So it is considered super, super effective. Uh, and you're going to need to know the sides. So here we go. Now, the biggest outcome of the Protestant Reformation is the Thirty Years' War. Thirty Years' War are Protestants versus Catholics. All right, so let's list our teams here. We've got Protestant. Who's a Protestant nation? Germany. Germany, absolutely. Martin Luther's from there. They're the first ones to turn. Who's another Protestant nation? England. <coughs> Okay, and France is split. 
Terrence is a little split. Okay. Okay. Who are my Catholics? Italy. <laughs> huh? Italy. Italy is because they got the papal states in Spain. Spain happens to be the most powerful European country at this point. This is the best time to be Spanish, and they are Catholic. Okay. Now, Catholicism is going to rise in popularity even after the Protestant Reformation because the Catholics, led by Spain, are going to go to the New World. So if you're Hispanic, you're probably a... Yeah, because they go over to the New World and they kind of force Catholicism down the throats of everyone. So Catholicism will recover. Okay, so the biggest thing that you need to know is your teams, who's Catholic and who's Protestant. You need to know that it is going to stop the European economy. It is going to destroy the European uh, infrastructure and slows down the technology of Europe. So is this a good thing or a bad thing for Europe? Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. So a big deal. What do you got? It is. So the 30 Years War is going to slow down Europe's economy. It is going to destroy their infrastructure and it is going to slow down their technological advancement. They just kind of stop for 30 years because they're all just killing each other. And then they're like, well, shit, this is stupid because the war wasn't ending because it's gone on for 30 years. So they end up signing the Peace of Westphalia. And this is a huge piece of wonderful evidence that you can sum back to whenever you need it. So the Peace of Westphalia says that a nation can do whatever it wants inside its own sovereign borders. And that is a huge piece of legislation that is still harping back to today. So you need to know this. The Peace of Westphalia, which is signed at the end of the Thirty Years War, says a nation, a sovereign nation, can do whatever it wants inside its borders and another nation can't do anything about it. what like does that only apply to those countries that were in the 30 years war or is that like it's it kind of been used and extended upon like the un uses this as a found of a foundational component of like you are sovereign unless you are killing people and doing genocides and stuff like that then they can interfere but it's a big deal all right so your 30 years war is the 12th deadliest event in the world history. Now keep in mind, three million people is a lot of people. But when you compare it to 70 million people in World War II, it's hard to be like, Woo. But that's a lot of people, okay? And as you can see, we're about to talk about the Manchu conquest of China, which is gonna kill 25 million people. But we gotta guess. All right, so what you need to know is, uh, Absolutely. Uh, let's do some boards real quick. On your whiteboard, what year did the Protestant Reformation begin? <coughs> Virginia. On your whiteboard, what is the selling of a church office? Selling of a church office. Good. Olivia. Simony. On your whiteboard, please tell me who's the guy behind the Protestant Reformation. Good, Joseph, there you go. Who is the French leader of the Protestant Reformation? He's going to inspire hard work, uh, which will inspire both the Huguenots and the Puritans. What do you got, Taylor? John Calvin. On your whiteboard, who is the guy who starts the Anglican Church? Good. You have Henry III right there. Okay, we are going to talk Roman numerals on Friday, on Thursday, because we got to get this in order. Um, and people don't know their Roman numerals, and unfortunately, if you write the wrong Roman numerals, you're wrong. Does that make sense? So we're going to help you. And I'm terrible at Roman numerals, so if I can teach you something, it's going to be good and simple. Is that okay with you? Perfect. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of the person who will embrace the Anglican Church and use it to empower her position and enforce it on the world? Hunter. Elizabeth I. What year did Elizabeth I defeat the Spanish Armada and make England the world power? 
Cassidy. 1588. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of, what is it called when you buy uh, forgiveness from the Catholic Church? Good. Got a key. Indulgences. Indulgences. On your whiteboard, please tell me what are the names of the John Calvin's descendants in England? They will eventually come here. Good. Catherine. Puritan. Perfect. Absolutism is your next setting. Let's go. Okay. Absolutism is the late. Beliefs. That's good. It is based on the belief of divine right, which I am going to teach Henry divine right, my son. I'm going to teach him this, that I am his mother by God's choice. So who is he to challenge God's authority? That's a pretty great line, dude. Yeah, by challenging my authority, you challenge God. That's pretty strong. Just put away your toys, you know? God made me your mother. Who are you to challenge God's authority? That's... Yeah, dude. Hilarious because I'm not religious, but that's fine. <laughs> Divine right is the belief that God has hand-selected monarchs. And no mortal should challenge God's authority. Damn! That's a good argument. It's a good argument. Okay? And it is really going to be embraced by two men. And that would be Louis the Fourteenth. Like, look at this look. Damn. You're actually going to study that portrait in AP Art History, by the way. And there's actually two copies made by the same artist. There's one is in the Louvre and one is at Versailles, still to this day. And I've seen both in person. And then you have Peter the Great of Russia. Okay, these are the embodiments of absolutism. Okay, so absolutism is making the monarch the center of every decision. That's what absolutism is. It is making the monarch the center of every decision. So it started in France. That is Louis XIV in France. He lived at Versailles. Okay. So, he forced all of his lords to live. Anyone been to Versailles? Yeah! How over the top is it? It's insane, right, Virginia? Like, uh, it's just absolutely insane. If you go to Paris, you have to go to Versailles because, like, it, you'd be wasting a trip to Paris if you didn't go. What do you got? It was really big, but it was so busy that we couldn't even go inside. Like, oh, we had shit. garden area. Like, it's huge, but there were somehow so many people. Yeah, I mean, it gets wild. No, they couldn't even it's so time. packed. Even when we were there, like, the Hall of Mirrors and stuff was just wild because it was, like, yeah, not a time I'd want to be in COVID, but there no, you go. I was, like, not like nine. Yeah, like, well, you probably really didn't care about a big old house anyway, but. Yeah, but it was crazy. <laughs> so, at Palace of Versailles, he forced all the lords and nobles to live with him so he could spy on them and keep uh, track of them because you can't plot against them if you're getting drunk every single night on his table, right? So he kept them fat and happy and drunk so they couldn't conspire against him. So did that make the lords strong or weak? Yeah. They're getting drunk every single night? Oh, I thought you were talking about the dude that was like getting drunk. <coughs> no, the king, made the king stronger, okay? So he is going to be the center. In the center of the palace is his bedchamber. Yeah, that's how he like radiates and all that stuff. So here's the Hall of Mirrors. You've probably seen that photo before, okay? The fountains in the back. This is what Versailles looks like. This is the front gate. You walk in this way, that's Paris. So he is the center and the all-seeing eye. This is his bedchamber right here. <coughs> in the center of everything, so he is the center of life in France. Sun King. Okay, everything is about him. He makes every decision, the whole thing. All right. <clears throat> However, the positive thing, he brings a bunch of art and arts and stuff, and you're going to study a ton of art uh, done under Louis XIV because he commissions all these art things. Uh, however, he is going to bankrupt France. So his descendants, Louis XVI, is going to get his head chopped off. 
also he comes to the American aid and that bankrupts him even more. And then his wife's gonna say, let them eat cake. And then they cut off his head. But that's coming. And she really didn't say that, but that's fine. All right, absolutism in Russia. So we know, okay, that Ivan the, um, Ivan the Terrible is going to come into power and defeat the Mongols, yes? He defeats the Mongols in 1533. Just so you have a point of reference, I don't need you to memorize it. Ivan the Terrible comes into power in 1533, okay? He is going to name himself Tsar, C-Z-A-R. Uh, it's two different spellings. T S A R is one or C Z A R. Either or is four. Okay? So after he dies, his son, Michael Romanov, is going to come into power. And this is the Romanov family. There has only been one ruling family in Russia, and it's the. Oh. And they're going to be in power until 1918, until they're all. Yeah, they all, yeah, they all get murdered which is pretty cool, yeah? They all get murdered, including this chick, who is? A child. Good for you, yeah, <laughs> Anastasia. She gets murdered, too. There's a rumor that she got out, and now she's worth hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. She's dead. She died in the next room. Why was she Well, because there's a very famous photo of all their bodies splayed out where they were killed in the Winter Palace, and you, there's no Anastasia. That's because the maids were trying to sneak her out the back, and they just shot her. Because you gotta kill the kids, guys. You gotta kill the kids, and that's during the Russian Revolution. What do you mean they killed them? <laughs> they killed them. They had to. They were shooting them in the bodies, but they weren't dying. Why weren't they dying, Henry? Hiding all the diamonds under their stuff because they wanted to get away. Yeah, because no one really wants to shoot, especially women and children, in the face. You know what I mean? That's not really what you do. You typically just shoot them in the chest and stuff because you don't want to shoot them in the head. But they were shooting in their chest and stuff, and the bullets were ricocheting off. They ended up really dying, like downstairs in the closet. But they were shooting. But they had all the like the, all the rubies and diamonds and all that stuff because the Romanovs are one of the wealthiest families in the world. That's why Russia is still one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Um, they have all these minerals and stuff. It was they had it all sewed into their like garters and all that stuff, so they couldn't kill them. Eventually, they had to be shot in the head. But we'll get there. 1617, they become. Okay, one thing you do need to know, there's a big difference, that the Russians are going to keep their serfs until the 1880s. Yeah. Russians keep their serf until the 1880s. Guys, we had an American Civil War that ended in 1865. They had serfs until after our slavery. Damn is right. So keep that in mind. Um, <coughs> and then there we go. Okay. Okay, one thing you do need to know about Russia is it is going to be modernized and westernized by Peter the Great. And he is going to create Petersburg. St. Petersburg, Russia is named after Peter. Peter. Okay, Peter the Great, St. Petersburg, and it is going to be an example of westernization because everyone in Russia knows they're behind, so they're trying to show themselves as a new modernizing country. Remember the primary source, right? Okay, they're falling behind, so they try to modernize, so they build this really western city. Anyone ever been there? Okay, never mind. I've never been there either. My husband's been, so it's really cool. Anyway, so you do need to know they are Eastern Orthodox. When do you wars things you need to know? Okay. So, other absolute rulers, you should be, no, pertinent. China, this is where I really want to be. Skip a space center, China. How much longer do I have? I am crushing it. Here we go. All right, China, here we go. The Ming Dynasty is in power, okay? They overthrew the Yan Dynasty with the White Lotus Society, correct? And now we have the Ming Dynasty is now in power, so they're trying to recover post-Mongols, okay? Now, the Ming Dynasty is all about 
culture, not about economy. So are they booming an economy? <clears throat> no. However, are they still trading and making money? Mm -hmm. Yes, but is it nearly as high as it used to be? No. Okay. <coughs> you do need to know that <coughs> they are going to reinstate the civil service exam. That is a huge deal. The Ming and eventually the Qing, who are going to overthrow the Ming, are going to reinstate the civil service exam, okay, which is based on Confucianism, which is based on putting a merit system for the bureaucracy, the whole thing, yes? Okay, so they're going to reinstate this. They're also going to do what? Foot binding, because that's part of the Chinese culture they're trying to bring back. Their major Chinese inspiration is the Song Dynasty. Wouldn't be the worst thing for you to know. Okay, so the Song Dynasty is really who they're harpening back to. Okay, under the Ming, the Golden Age is Yongle. Okay, Yongle is their Golden Age. Okay, and he is going to move the capital to Beijing. He is going to move the capital to Beijing, okay? And he is going to build the Forbidden City. This is the Forbidden City. You've seen this, haven't you, with the big walls, the moat around it, yes? Mm -hmm. And all the cool, like, pagodas and stuff. In AP Art History, you are going to study it. What? Why is it called the Forbidden City? Because only the absolute elites of society could be there, because that's where the emperor lived, and they were going to make him more of a demigod. So that's pretty cool, right? happened like 300 years ago. Like 300 years ago. Um, yeah, that's so cool. Are you an APR history? Okay. Well, and you need to know that he is going to fund the voyages of Zhang He. He's the guy, we've talked about him already, he's the guy who's supposed to go pick up like science and math and he goes pick up like all these knickknacks, like giraffes. <laughs> Remember, he's the guy who picks up giraffes and brings them back to China and everyone's like, woo, giraffes. Yeah, but does this help China advance? Not really. yeah. No, but they can now have a giraffe, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so you do need to know, like Zheng He, like we're good. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, you also need to know the Ming are known for their pottery. Like these pots, and I don't know why, the Ming Dynasty China, like 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 China, like where, is like the most precious stuff. Like every once in a while, someone finds one like in an attic, and they bring it to like auctioneers, and it goes like I think the last one was like two hundred fifty million dollars for like a stupid little pot. Mm -hmm. Museums and stuff. I mean, one thing that has preserved its value with the chaos of the economy is art and antiquities. And they just buy it for people to look at it? No, they buy it for themselves. Like, I mean, come on, everyone knows Jay-Z owns a bunch of Pollock paintings, and those Pollock paintings have increased in their value significantly. Come on, you know, there's that, like four songs about it. Isn't it also like a tattoo place? Yes, because if you buy it and stuff like that, yeah. cultural stuff, you get away with it. All right, here we go. So, Ming decline, here we go. Corruption, oh my God, how shocking. Someone said I, I talk too negatively about the Catholic Church, so I'm trying to spread out my negativity. As someone who grew up very deep in the Catholic Church. Oopsie. <laughs> okay, so you do need to know that they are going to be defeated by the Manchus, who are their rivals to the north. Okay, so the Ming are going to have a lot of corruption. Their bureaucracy gets too big, and like frankly, they're not really focused on anything besides culture. And the Manchus are getting stronger, and they eventually come in and overthrow. Here we go, Qing Dynasty. By the way, this is your last Chinese dynasty ever. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hi. Well, guys, who's the fault of that? White people. China, the British are coming. Yeah, that's the style of the Manchu. Someone push back. Shade. 
That's the style of it. It is cool style. I think we should bring it back, boys. Let's do this. I mean, if women are like breaking their feet, you can have like a terrible hairstyle. Can we agree? Here we go. The Qing Dynasty. They are the second foreign invaders of China. The first are the. They are the second, and they are technically the Manchu Manchus, but they are going to be called the Qing Dynasty, just like Yuan Dynasty is actually the Mongols. Okay, you need to know that all men in China had to wear the braids to show loyalty. So if you see Chinese, because we're going to have photos by the end of their reign, yes? Okay, because remember, photos are going to be developed in the very early, in the very, very early part of the uh, 17th century or the 1800s. And you're going to see that they're going to have braids, just like this. And that's how they just demonstrate their loyalty. Okay? Manchus are going to prefer other Manchus. So there is a racial component. However, they keep the civil service exam. So are they as oppressive as the Mongols? No. no. They're also not as effective as the Mongols. There's something to say said about that. So the Manchus are going to live in China. They are an invading force. They are going to force all men to wear this hairstyle to show loyalty. Okay, King Z is your golden age. Okay, they are going to thrive. Okay, they're going to thrive and trade for a while. Okay, but eventually, white people. The British are going to get the people in China addicted to opium. And then they're going to get all the opium addicts to fight against the Chinese. <laughs> it's called the Opium War. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So they get everyone in China super addicted. And then they're like, oops, the Chinese government won't let us sell you anymore. So they're like, you should fight the Chinese government. And so they're like, let's fight them. And they do. And they overthrow the Chinese government. Wow. And then we have the protectorate states of China. Anyway, we'll get there. All right, Quan Long is another major person. You need to know that they, under Quan Long, they are going to expand significantly under Quan Long. Uh, and they are going to create uh, a tributary system, the largest tributary system ever by the Chinese. But they're not really Chinese because they're Manchu. But Quan Long is going to have the largest territory. Now, this is important for uh, post 1950s. Quan Long is going to conquer Tibet, Nepal, Burma, and Vietnam. Guess what the Chinese want? All of them. All of them. And what are they harping back to? Quan Long. Well, this Chinese ruler had it. Why can't we have it back? Because who's going to take all this land from them? white people, the British are coming, the French are coming, and they're going to take it away, and they're going to say imperialism is what took these things away. And so today, China is trying to build back their empire to take back <coughs> Burma and Vietnam. How's that going? Pretty well for China. I mean, they're doing great. They've built themselves a military island, and we don't even know what's in the island, so that's good. Yeah, All right. Huh? Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, so... This is really important for the big star. Because of all their military accomplishments, they needed money. So they sell trading rights to the British. What is the biggest mistake they made? Because yeah. once again, the British are going to realize, wait, I'm paying for this when I can just steal it? Hmm. So what are they going to do? They're going to sell trading rights to the British. Specifically to the British, and then other countries are going to jump in on it. Okay, It's called uh, the Canton system. Okay, So they're going to see that that's going to be a huge problem. Okay, It's going to decline because the Europeans are going to take over. 
the Qing Empire declines because the British take over, okay? And that is your end, okay? I do have Tokugawa that I'm gonna cover next period. So, I would take a look at my video if you want to, or I take a quick photo of Tokugawa. There's very little on your test on Japan. Actually, you know what? How about I ask you whatever I need for your do now on Japan, is that fair? Perfect. Does that work? I'm trying to be nice. Do people make it seem like... Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Damn. I'm ready for today to be over. <clears throat>